Hey everyone and welcome to this devlog video for Creep Wars. Creep Wars is a game that I made in 48 hours using the Godot game engine and a pre-made art pack as part of a game jam competition with some friends. Creep Wars is a top-down 3D tower defense game that also has some maze building elements in it. So you're not just responding to waves that are coming from the AI from the game itself, but it's competitive. You're actually competing against an AI player in this case. You're not only building your own towers in a maze to prevent your opponent's enemies from getting to the end of your maze, you're sending your own creeps, your own monsters to attack and get through the maze of the competing player. So it's a tower defense with some competitive elements built into it. Now this isn't a super original concept, I based it very, very heavily off the Warcraft 3 custom game Winter Mall Wars, which when I was a kid I would play all the time with my brother and some friends. So Winter Mall Wars and a lot of Warcraft 3 custom games have a special place in my heart, and you can see from just some of the short footage that I borrowed from the channel Legion Gaming that that it's kind of similar to what Creep Wars looks like. You're building a tower, you're trying to stop enemies, and you're also gaining income from sending enemies across the way to the other team. Now, I didn't want to recreate an entire multiplayer game like you see in Winter Mall Wars, so I decided for 48 hours for the sake of the game jam that I would just do you versus an AI. There would only be two players, and I could write a pretty simple AI and wouldn't have to do any networking or multiplayer to make it work. The art pack that we used is the 3D low poly fantasy pack from Devil's Workshop. It's free on itch.io and I'll have a link to that in the description below. So in my game, you'll see that I modified or added some new textures, but they're all based on the original look and all the models are the same, just scaled and slightly recolored. So it's all the same original art that was found in the pack, just with some slight different variations. Okay, let's actually get into how I made the game. So I knew in 48 hours there was no way I could really create any kind of complex systems. I had to do as simple of navigation as possible and really focus on the content because if there weren't enough towers to upgrade and there weren't enough creeps to send, it just wouldn't feel good. So I started by trying to implement a simple A-star system using Godot's built-in A-star implementation. And I actually created a tutorial to help you make a system exactly like I use for this game. I'll link to those videos in the description and in a card up top, but you can make this system if you want. It's actually pretty simple. So once I had my navigation system in place, I added just super basic placeholders for towers and creeps. I was just trying to add a basic melee tower like this peasant you see here, and I figured I would just have a melee range and if I had time, a magic upgrade tree. I wasn't sure how I'd differentiate those, but I just wanted just those three, nothing too fancy, just to try and give some kind of variety. And again, I was using this art pack, which didn't, besides the character models, didn't really have a lot of other things I could use for enemies. So I made these kind of dumb looking caterpillar things as the first enemy, just to get something moving across the board. After a bit of time, I had the basic systems in place. You can see this kind of outline of the first draft of the UI that I made, which has stayed pretty much the same even as I finished the game. You can see that I can spawn creeps and that I can upgrade towers, even though I didn't really have any creeps or towers to upgrade, you could still do it. Um, and I had up at the top lives and income, so when you'd send a creep, you'd gain more income that you could then use to build towers. So a lot of the systems were there, I was getting to the point where I needed to both make AI and content, but rather than doing those, I tried to do something more fun like making sound effects. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, the first draft didn't really turn out that well. Okay, so I had a lot of work to do. I'm a software developer by trade, not a sound designer if you can tell. But still, I was slowly adding features and sounds and I started working on the menus and just trying to make it at least have a cohesive feel and look and I added a pause menu, which you can see here and got a bunch of the other systems working, did some refactoring and at this point I was about maybe a day in because I had been uh, able to borrow a lot of code. So I was working pretty efficiently, but I was getting to the point where it was like, okay, I'm a little under a day. Um, I've got a lot of content to add. So once I had basic menus, all the systems were working, I then turned to creating all the creeps that could be spawned. I figured I'd do the creeps first and then I would move on to the towers later since I thought the towers would be a little bit more complex. So you can see, not only did I add all the creeps, I also added these little pop-up messages uh, that really only get used for when you try to build or spawn something you don't have enough gold for, and whenever you try and build something that blocks the path. 
the game won't let you actually build a tower there, so I needed some feedback to give to the player to tell them why it wasn't working, and this wasn't perfect, but I was pretty happy with how this little notification system worked. And then on the bottom left, you'll see all of the creeps that I added. Again, most of them were just variations of the different character models, trying to retexture them. A lot of them just ended up as fancier ones that came before with maybe a few different swords or shields. The last one, that Dark King one, is kind of interesting because I made him floaty and kind of bounce up and down and have some particles behind him. So he's kind of as close as I got to a unique monster. And he does have a unique mechanic, which is when you spawn him, you actually lose income. So he's really hard to kill, but you lose income. So it was kind of an end game unit meant to speed up the game. Once you start spawning them, you can only spawn so many. So you won't be able to spawn a ton of them, but it'll lose income and hopefully just kind of speed up the end of the game since they're hard to kill. And now for all these creeps too, I actually, and also towers, I wrote a JSON importer where I just laid out all my creeps and towers in JSON. And that ended up being a lot easier than custom resources, which is what I was using at first, just because I had a sheet and I could just go and search and adjust all the values really quickly. And if I was gonna do it again, I would still use JSON, but write a little bit more custom importing and maybe use Godot's built-in curves to create a difficulty curve and a curve to ramp up the cost of creeps and towers as you get older as the game goes on because I was kind of doing it manually and ramping it up by numbers that felt good and just doing some play testing. But I think if I could have came up with a mathematical formula or a curve that would have let me automatically determine what the next creep price should have been or what the tower upgrade should be and mathematically would go up at a exponentially or a polynomic, some kind of a formula to do it for me, I think it would have felt better. But you know, 48 hour game jam. So there's only so many things you can do. So the next thing I did was work on all of the different towers. And like I had hoped, I ended up having a melee ranged and magic upgrade line. So I was pretty happy with how it turned out, but I was starting to get to the point where I needed to make my UI, my heads up display, look good and accurately convey to the player what each tower did and looked like, as well as the creeps. Toward the end, and what you can see here is I created a scene in Godot that had a custom viewport where all I would have to do is add the model that I was using that I cared about, so a specific tower or creep. I would just add the model to the scene and then when I ran it, I had a script that would take a picture of the viewport and render it to a texture and then close the scene. And so this way I could quickly just add every single tower and creep that I had to the scene, run it really quickly and it would pr produce a 256 by 256 PNG file that showed what that tower or creep looked like. And you can see 256 is just the size of the viewport that I'm using here. So I was able to customize it as needed and this is a script I think I'm gonna use in pretty much any project where I need to capture basically a picture or an image of some scene that I've created. It was super helpful and helped make the UI have a cohesive look. If it'd be helpful for you too, I'll include a screenshot of the code and what the scene setup looks like here and just leave it on the screen. You can pause it if you want to copy it down. It's super simple. The code's not very good. Like I said, I was just trying to scramble this together for the game jam, but hopefully it'll be helpful to you. In this clip too, you'll get a better look at all the different towers I made. So there's a couple different types of archers which have slightly different bows and the arrows they shoot look different. And then you'll see there's a couple different mages from the initiates and then at the top there's an earth mage and a fire mage which have slightly different projectiles using a rock and kind of a spiky ball respectively, uh, different models that came with the art pack. So they're not anything too complex but I was pretty happy in the time allotted for just the simple particle trails and projectiles that I was able to make for all of the range and magic units. Another benefit too was because they were simple models and they weren't using any kind of skeletal animations, I could make all of the animations for both moving and shooting all in Godot's animation player. I would just give creeps a little bit of a wobble as they walk and then it was pretty fun making like the bow shooting animations for the archers and then making just simple cast animations for the magic wielders. So it was a lot of content to make, but it was pretty fun, especially at the end once I had a lot of the looks together and was just kind of combining different models that came with the art pack and giving them some color and some personality. And then the final few changes I made were one, to readjust the map orientation. And later on, you'll see too, I changed some of the textures just to make it reflect the R pack a bit more. I'm not really happy with the final look, but I think it's better than just this kind of like gray void that it's been for most of the game. But most importantly, I actually added AI. And this was the last thing. 
I basically made as dumb of an AI as possible. It's got a timer and every second or couple seconds, it has an ability to make a decision and it'll check how much money it has and decide, should I build, should I upgrade or should I spawn? It's just those three decisions and it randomly selects from each while also disabling if you've built all your towers, for example, then it's not gonna build anymore. That won't be an option. And same with upgrading, even though that takes a long time to get to, and it will usually prefer spawning creeps instead of upgrading or building. If I had more time, then I would have made it much more complex and had different types of like either more aggressive or more defensive AIs. And the way I figured out the build order was pretty much what I'd feared I would have to do eventually, which is the super unfun thing of manually selecting all the different tiles that the AI should build in. So I basically give it, gave it a predefined build order where I had to select each tile in the correct order and tell it to build. And it actually worked out really well. It was a good solution. The problem is it just takes a ton of time to do it's not very flexible and isn't flexible if I were to maybe expand and add different maps later on. So overall, it's a good system and not an awful one, but if I were to keep working on this game, I would definitely want to do something that's a little bit more programmatic, able to handle different maps better. Otherwise, if there's any other comments or questions you have about something I did or how I implemented something, definitely let me know in the comments below. Other than that though, we've got a Discord server that I'll link in the description. We'd love to have you there. I can answer any questions about Creep Wars or some of my other tutorials. And besides that, you can play Creep Wars. It's on itch it's free you've got to download it but i'd love to have you play it and get your feedback so link to that also in the description below let me know what you think about it and let me know how you do could you beat the ai was it hard was it easy anyway thanks so much for watching everyone hope that this has been a helpful breakdown and devlog for creep wars let me know if you've got any questions and i'll see you in the next video